previously on YouTube's The Drawing Dead. Ah! And everyone folds. This look came on his face. Uh. The villain tables two kings, and I show my trip eights that have now accidentally made a straight. And I see. It's Friday, we're at Hollywood, I'm on the list, 425, so let's see what happens. Well, I'll tell you what happened. My very first hand at the table, the under the gun player raises to $15. Middle position short stock player makes it $50 and I make it $160 with pocket kings. The under the gun player folds and the middle position player shoves. Obviously I call and I lose $355 to pocket aces. Not a good first hand. Nothing will quite get me in the mood to play some speculative hands like getting smacked squarely in the mouth my first hand at the table. So shortly after, when an early position player opens to 15 and it folds around to my big blind, of course I'm calling and playing four high out of position. That's standard, right? Ace, deuce, three, rainbow. Not a bad flop, all things considering. And even though it should hit the early position opener pretty hard, he checks it back when I check it over to him. The five of diamonds on the turn changes everything. Now I lead out for $20, hoping to get at least one street of value, but he folds pretty quickly. It doesn't take long to discover that I've stumbled upon the ultimate fitter fold table. Most of these players are only continuing post-flop with made hands, and a few of them are overfolding when the bet sizings make them uncomfortable. Applying pressure in games like this can be extremely profitable. Does that justify opening a hand like Jack-3 suited? Um, no. Does that stop me? No again, and I open a 20 in late position. The big blind, a young could have never seen before, defends. As far as flops go, the king-queen-7 with two clubs flop should hit my perceived range, although my actual hand, not so much, and I'm fine with it going check-check. The big blind leads for $25 when the ten of spades appears on the turn, and I make the call with my straight draw. Well, the river six of clubs didn't complete the straight for me, but it does bring in the flush, and not many people are checking flushes on boards full of royalty, so I seize this opportunity to rep a whole bunch of things. My $75 river bet leaves the big blind feeling some kind of way as he hems and hauls about it for a while, before folding what he said was king ten. In this next hand I raised with ace jack from the button and only the big blind calls. I've been raising a lot from my buttons and I think the big blind is getting wise to my ways. This 10 high flop of nothingness doesn't help me out at all, but maybe a continuation bet here could take down the pot? Um, uh, maybe not. The nothingness continues on the floor club's turn and we both check. Him leading for $50 when the 10 pairs on the river? Well, that really kind of cements the fact that I've lost this pot. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was so interesting. It was so interesting. Here, action has been folded over to the low jack on my direct right and he has opened the pot for $20. King Jack offsuit is a more than suitable hand for calling from my hijack position and I make that call. At the other end of the table, the big blind calls as well and we see the flop three ways. King Jack 10 with two diamonds is a great flop for my hand and the low jack continues for $25. Although the board is draw heavy and super coordinated, I choose not to raise here in an attempt to keep the big blind in the mix. I fail because he folds. The turn brings in a pretty tricky card, the Eight of Diamonds, which completes flush draws and a couple weirdly played straight draws. Raising now would be overplaying my hand a bit, so I choose just to call again and reevaluate the river. The river makes the situation even worse when the Queen of Diamond hits, putting four diamonds on the board. The only villain left now checks, and I tank for a bit over turning my hand into a bluff. I check. I have two pair. Luckily for me, I decide against it and check back, and he shows me Ace 10 offsuit with the Ace of Diamonds for the River Nuts. So, the results of this session in the game for 1400, out for 801. So, down 600 bucks ish. Not the best. And I've been tearing it up recently, so I was bound to get a losing session or two in there someplace. Running kings into aces, my second hand at the table doesn't help. Looking down to pocket pairs continuously and not flopping a set doesn't help. Missing straight draws and flush draws and combo draws and gut shot draws and any other draw doesn't help. Unfortunately, I uh, did not do a mid-session update because my game was really good and for a second it was short-handed and I was scared the game would break. So I uh, skipped the whole mid-session update thing in order to stay in the game longer. Still didn't help. And the other weird thing about the session is I really don't know how much hand footage I actually got. So you know what we might do? We might just make this one of those two for one deals. Cause I know I'm gonna play tomorrow night. So how about we just wrap Friday and Saturday into one uh, big extravaganza? How about that? And let's try harder to win tomorrow night. And then we'll just kind of act like Friday night, you know, didn't happen. Down 600. Friday night is over. I am back. It is Saturday night, and I think it's time to go play some poker. And let's hope the results tonight will be a tad better than they were last night. I think last night I was down 600 bucks. Does that sound about right? Tonight, let's try not to be down 600 bucks. Okay. Back at Hollywood. I kind of determined you guys didn't need to see the little drive up here. You know what the drive looks like by now, right? But I'm on the list, both the 2-5 and the 1-2. The focus tonight is on playing well. Not even necessarily winning, just playing well. Although I'd like to win. Winning's a lot more fun than losing. That's for damn sure. I sit down in this session the following day and see a lot of the same fitter foldish type players from the day before. Hopefully today's session results will be better. An early position open to $15 with one caller, and I make a pretty standard call here with pocket fives. The big blind joins, and we see the flop four ways. The queen deuce four with two club flop gets checked to me, and I bet $40 here both for value and to protect my equity against future overcards. Although I don't expect the queen to ever fold, I may be able to get hands like ace jack, king jack, or maybe even pocket sixes to go away. This bet trims the field down the heads up with the middle position player as we go into the turn. The turn nine of spades is an overcard to my fives, but he checks again. 
Now my thinking is his range is weighted heavily towards flush draws or pocket pairs he isn't ready to give up on yet. Again, I expect that I may get snapped off by a queen, but I need to deny equity to those flush draws, so I decide to bet $75. Whatever he had, he deemed it too weak to continue, and I start the session winning this pot. I'm slipping away. Here, we have an early position limp, one of the better players in the player pool makes it 30, and I call in position with 3-5 of clubs. The button calls behind me, the small blind calls, the limper calls, and we go 5 ways to the flop. Ace, Ace, 5, Rainbow does apparently nothing for anyone, and it gets checked through. Action is checked to me a second time on the 4 clubs turn, and I bet $70 with my pair, baby flush draw, and wheel draw. Only the pre-flop raiser comes along. The river eight of diamonds means that I've whiffed the whole thing, but I do beat naked draws, so I have a tiny bit of showdown value with my pair. He checks and I check it back, only to lose to pocket kings. So it's the mid-session update and it's raining, and it's raining pretty good. But do you think rain is going to stop my mid-session update? I don't think so. But, since I'm not stupid, I ain't going to stand out here forever. Let me tell you what's going on in that game for me. About nothing. Really, about nothing. After being down uh, about a half a buy-in last night, I decided to come back tonight and play a little bit better. That's not really working out. I think right now in the game I'm about even. I haven't really won any big pots. I haven't really lost any big pots. I've made some silly moves with hands like 4-5 of hearts and 3-5 of clubs. I'm really not getting punished. I just need to pick up some hands. And I need to get out of this rain. So we're going to head back in. We're going to wrap the session up. We're going to hopefully get something going on. Besides me just folding over and over. And then I'll tell you guys how it all ended up. I'll tell you guys how everything changed after the mid-session update. Hopefully I'll tell you guys how I crushed the game after the mid-session update. Or maybe... You guys will get to see me cry for the first time on the vlog. One limp to me and I look down at easily the most hated of the non-paired premium hands. Ace Queen offsuit. I bump it up to $25 and get called by the small blind and the original limper. The small blind checks the 10 9 3 with two clubs flop, but the limper donks out into me for $50. A weird play to be sure, but with two overcards and a backdoor straight and flush draw, I'm not giving up that easily. I end up being the only one to make this call. The turn King of Hearts slows down the donk betting and turns my naked non-paired overcards into a sexy gut shot straight draw. We both check the turn. The river, much like on my senior prom night, we see the J slide right inside and we make our hidden straight. Our preflop limping donk better continues with another $50 river bet. Raising here is obviously the best option and I make it $150. He doesn't take too long with it before making the call, leading me to believe that I should have made it much more. But either way, I scoop a nice sized pot.
sometimes you make plays because the villains in the hands are showing extraordinary weakness. Like here, where an early position player opens to $10 and I choose to 3-bet with Jack-10 offsuit. Right away this plan goes off the rails when an OMC on the button calls, the small blind calls, and the original preflop razor calls. Oops. The ace-7-9 with two clubs board kind of bails me out because theoretically I should be hitting this board pretty hard. In actuality, I just have another gut shot, but that's good enough for me. I continue my story with a $105 bet and they all fold. Forcing play, especially when I'm vlogging, is easily one of my biggest leaks. Here you find me raising 4 or 5 offsuit to $25 over a limper from the button and only getting that limper to call. Although I am happy with the ace king deuce rainbow flop and pondering how to attack this hand, the preflop limper just open folds when the action is on him. Well, that works too. Enough of these off brand hands, let's play a good hand why don't we? A middle position player is open at $20 and I look down at a pretty decent hand in pocket aces and 3 bet to 70. The small blind cold calls and the original opener comes along as well. The king six king flop isn't exactly my favorite especially with me holding two aces and knowing that these calling ranges are made up of more kings than anything else. I'm not a firm believer in pot control in cash games, but I'm fine with checking this one back. The five of spades puts two spades on board and now the small blind leads for $100. The middle position player calls pretty quickly and I make the call because I simply don't believe either of them. The queen of spades on the river completes the flush but it's checked to me again and I bet $200 for value. The small blind snap calls, which can be good, and the middle position player announces fold. That's when I see the bad news. Sometimes, I just can't resist, you know? $10 button straddle and a guy is limped in in middle position. I race to $40 and alarm bells ring when the mostly tight button calls behind me. The middle position player calls, then dark checks, and we are off to see the flop three ways. Once again, a great flop for me with it being 1085 rainbow. I bet $75 into about $120 and the button quickly calls. The middle position player folds, and now there are just two of us. The ace on the turn isn't really how I scripted this thing working out, and I check call a bet of $125 by the button. Dreams are 100% dashed by that king on the river, and I effectively just give up. The button checks it back and shows me pocket eights for a flopped middle set. Poker. How do you think the night went? How do you think the night went by the tone of my voice? I'll give you a hint. This isn't the happy tone of voice. This is the down tone of voice. Although I shouldn't be down. I really shouldn't. When I got here, like normal, I started off insta-stuck. Stuck right away, like $300. Clawed back. Got up, maybe $350, $400, and left. Down $73. In for $1,000, out for $927. Is down $73 the end of the world? Hell no. 
But it does bring my voice down a couple octaves, huh? In actuality, most of my big hands held up, although I did get aces cracked once, so what the hell am I talking about? But I had a ton of pocket pairs that nothing became of those. So that's like $25 a pop right there. Missed some straight draws, missed some flush draws. Those add up. Add up to negative $73 is what they add up to. But now it's time to get home. It's time to get home, get some sleep, and get ready for Game of Thrones tomorrow. So, if you like the videos, make sure you subscribe. Leave me a comment and I will probably respond. And what am I missing? I'm missing something because that didn't feel right. But whatever. I'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Oh, I remembered. Thumbs up. Do the thumbs up. All right, bye. Next time on YouTube's The Drawing Dead. Tuesday, April 23rd, 510 at Ameristar. Let's go. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding. So my current status in this 510 game I'm in is stuck. Status equal stuck. Stuck amount equal probably stuck. Friday night back at Hollywood Casino for some uh, St. Louis poker action. Running kings and aces doesn't help. Missing, um... Unfortunately, I forego in the, and the other weird thing about this game is I really don't know how hand footage and the other weird thing about this game is I, uh, we might just make this one of them two old. And let's try to, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to win hard tomorrow night. So if you like the videos, do the stuff. You know what to do. Winning's a lot better than losing. Winning's. And it's time to, uh, go play some poker. And let's. After the, uh, as promised, I'm back Saturday night and I, uh, gotta figure out what's going on where. Hopefully, get into another 2 5 game. Hopefully, have better results than I did last night, which was down 600 bucks. So, why am I still standing here? So, besides the being down $73, I really don't have a lot to talk about. Missed some straight draws, missed some flush draws, missed a lot of stuff. So, if you like the videos, you know, subscribe. Leave me a comment and I'll probably respond. And, I don't know. It's too late.